Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is part 9 of What If Naruto Was Madara's Grandson. If you guys enjoy this What If and want to see part 10 of it, comment down below and let me know. Also check out previous parts of this What If. I have created a playlist for this What If where you can find all the previous parts. Link is in the description. And go ahead and check out other What Ifs in the channel. Before we start please do support for more awesome content. If you are new to this channel please subscribe and like this video and share this video with your friends. So let's start this video. Kanoha Outskirts About a half a mile outside of Kanoha there was an Amu team doing patrol. It was a regular mission and they seemed calm as patrol mission very rarely presented any trouble at all. Although they seemed calm on the outside all of the Amu personnel was warned about the incoming invasion and as such they were all in high alert, they just didn't show it. Suddenly an Anbu of said team stopped and looked around. Sense anything? Another Anbu asked. No captain the Anbu that stopped replied well replied another thing to his team leader, using the Anbu sign language. Possible shinobi group the Anbu said, and the leader nodded. The Anbu quickly and stealthily approached the encampment, and say a sand shinobi fathered in a circle. In the middle of the circle, was Kanji spread through it, and stopping just near each of the sand shinobi's feet. Each of the sand shinobis had a small scroll in their mouths and was going through hand seals very slowly. From the looks of it the technique seemed awfully complicated, and it seemed they must not get it wrong. Looks like a summoning ring one Anbu said to their captain. Yes, we can't allow them to summon anything. Get in your positions the captain ordered. I can't allow that a voice suddenly said behind them. They all turned around and saw a man. He had auburn hair, dark eyes, he wore a simple black jacket and pants with mesh armor underneath. He carried a small canister strapped to his hip. It was none other than the fourth Kazukage himself. Suddenly, what appeared to be sand started flowing out of his canister, and quickly and swiftly it wrapped around all four Anbu crushing them to death. Let's get this over with the Kazukage commanded. Stadium. Crowd. What's this? Sakura asked as she watched feathers start falling from nowhere making her sleepy. Genjutsu. She asked right before breaking the illusion. Genjutsu. Sasuke wondered as he also broke the illusion. We are being invaded by the sound and sand Kakashi explained as he fought against a couple of sound shinobi. What? Sakura yelled. The sand is our ally she stated. They are no longer our allies. We knew about this invasion since the end of the second phase of the Chunin exams, so we are prepared Kakashi said, trying to ease the worries of a fresh genin. Then why didn't we know? Sasuke asked getting pissed off by being kept in the dark. We had to keep it a secret, so they didn't find out we knew Kakashi said. Sakura was pretty much terrified from what was happening. She never had any real type of mission aside from the wave mission that got bumped into an airank, so she was pretty fresh. Sakura was from a civilian family, and as such she wasn't prepared from the hardships of a shinobi life, and lived her life sheltered in Kanoha. Sakura was about to ask another thing when they noticed Gar explode in sand, and showing his fully transformed biju. Sakura never got so scared in her life and seeing such a colossal beast right in front of her. In that moment she realized what people must have faced when the Kyubi attacked 14 years ago. Sensei, Gar Sakura tried to say, but her voice didn't reach her. She looked around and everyone from her graduation class is sleeping along with the civilians. Only Sakura, Hinata and apparently Sasuke, managed to dispel the genjutsu. Sasuke is an arrogant kid, but he isn't without skill. Don't worry Sakura. I said we planned for this, and Naruto will take care of Gara Kakashi said. You mean that dope knew well me, and Ichiha elite, didn't? Sasuke asked. This isn't the time Genin Kakashi said in a serious voice. Your mission is to help evacuate the civilians to the shelters. Wake up your classmates and separate into teams. Go Kakashi commanded and Sakura immediately jumped to her feet, while Sasuke was reluctant but nodded as well. Hanada team up with Zabuza and Haku and start sweeping and treating those you can, Kakashi said, and she nodded. Holy, Kakashi all but yelled, when he looked at the arena, and saw a massive poof of smoke. But the surprising part was that the smoke wasn't coming from Shukaku, but rather from Naruto himself. Kage box. When Orochimaru gave the signal, to start the invasion the entire Kage box erupted in smoke blocking the side of the Kages, and making the guards take defensive maneuvers, to ensure the safety are their leader. Every one of them jumped from the Kage box, and to the nearby roof. What neither of them expected was for the Kazukage's guards to suddenly become force people each one of them taking a corner of the roof. Each one of the guards, was from the sound. All of them went through the same hand seals at the same time. They all shouted, ninja art, four flames formation, and a purple barrier like the one in the arena emerged, and trapped the kages inside. Inside the barrier was the hokage, the raikage, the kazukage and surprisingly there was also Jureya who managed to follow his sensei to the roof, and also got trapped inside. What's the meaning of this? The raikage asked not pleased with what was happening. Each of the kages was keeping a secure distance from each other. I'm sorry for not warning you raikage dono, but I didn't know which side you would take the hokage spoke, and made the raikage glare at him. Explain, the Raikage almost shouted. 
lets me make the honors Raikage the Kazakage set before removing his clothes and revealing a smirking Orochimaru. Orochimaru? The Raikage asked, not believing his eyes. How could Orochimaru be posing as the Kazakage and neither he nor his guards noticing it? I am Orochimaru replied with a twisted smile. Now sensei let the fun begin Orochimaru said licking his lips in anticipation. You fool it's three against one, you stand no chance the Raikage replied getting raised eyebrows from the Hokage and Jiraiya. Kumo and Kanoha were never in really good terms since the Hayuga kidnapping. Three? The Hokage asked hopefully. Yes, I will fight with you. Consider it an apology for my father's mistakes the Raikage said before gathering his voice and shouting Kumo, we fight for, Kanoha. Yes, Dari, C, and Killer B yelled from outside the barrier, before splitting and going to face the sound and sand head on. I appreciate it Raikage Dono, the Hokage said. Perhaps there was hope to an alliance between the two most powerful hidden villages. Yes, now let's skin a snake, the Raikage said smirking. Orochimaru never expected Kumo to join Kanoha. That is why, even though the Raikage was present, Orochimaru still launched his invasion. Naive Orochimaru said before going through hand seals. Orochimaru may be a lot of things, but one thing he wasn't was stupid, and as such he was prepared for such odds. Tiger, snake, dog, dragon. Orochimaru went through the hand seals and clapped his hands. Summoning Jutsu. Edo Tensei Orochimaru said, and almost immediately four's coffin sprouted from the ground. The coffin slowly opened and revealed four shinobis seemingly dead but in reality, they were just waiting for Orochimaru to activate them for the upcoming battle. Shit, the Raikage, Hokage and Jureyu all thought at the same time, when they saw who was in each of the summoned coffins. Arena, Naruto watched and wondered the sheer size of Shikaku. That's one big raccoon Naruto said. Haite Naruto said turning to him. Leave the arena Naruto said, and he nodded knowing full well that Naruto was responsible for taking him down, and having him there could disturb Naruto's fight. Kurama, juice me Naruto thought to his partner. Okay Kurama replied before sending chakra to Naruto. Almost instantly a semi-transparent red cloak enveloped Naruto. His eyes turned blood red with a black vertical slit in the middle, his whiskers marks became more pronounced, and his fangs elongated. The Naruto's back nine chakra tails were swinging wildly as if they didn't have a mind of their own. Naruto placed his hands in a cross sign, and said multi-shadow clone jutsu, and in an instant nearly 2,000 clones popped into existence consuming his cloak, each one of them with enough chakra to match a jomen. There were Naruto's as far as the eye could see. Spread through the village, your priority is to protect and evacuate the civilians. Provide assistance where you can Naruto ordered. Yes all of the clones course before jumping away from the arena, leaving their creator to fight the Ichibi. Naruto placed his hands again in a cross sign and said, Enhanced Shadow Clone, and a single clone poofed into existence. This clone was like the rest, however he was reinforced making him more durable than the others, and capable of taking hits before dispelling. Join with Hinata-chan and protect her he said, and the clone nodded before using the Flying Thunder God Jutsu to teleport himself to Hinata. Shadow Clone Jutsu, Naruto said and Force clones poofed into existence. Kurama, I'll put up a barrier. Can you take control of the clone and hold it in place? Naruto asked. Keeping 2000 shadow clones active, powering an S rank barrier and still be able to fight a Biju, require too much concentration that Naruto wasn't capable of yet. No problem, Kurama replied. In an instant the four's clones sprinted to the four corners of the arena. They went through hand seals at the same time and said, Ninja Art, four flames formation, and a purple barrier erupted trapping Shikaku and Naruto inside. However, before the whole barrier could close three sand shinobis jumped over the forming barrier and landed inside. There were Sabaku no Tamari, Sabaku no Konkuro and their Jonin Sensei Baki. Damn, Naruto said as he watched the San Shinobi take place near Gar. This has just got a lot more dangerous. No holding back, Naruto thought before permanently keeping his EMS activated. His hand tightly gripped his fan as he became battle ready to go off against a Jonin, two Genin and Biju. I'll have to take out Konkuro and Tamari first, Naruto thought before releasing his grip on his fan, and taking from his storage seals a couple of three-pronged kunais. Naruto watched as the San Shinobi jumped to head of Shukaku, and yet he did nothing to remove them. Looks like Gar is mostly in control Naruto thought. He looked up to Shukaku's head and noticed Tamari reading her fan and Konkuro unwrapping his bundle revealing a puppet. Great, a puppet user, just my luck, Naruto thought. His odds didn't look so good, he cursed himself for not training his eyes further, so he could use the techniques Kurama told him. You made me feel alive Uzumaki Shukaku yelled, but it clearly was Gari's voice. Crazy bastard Naruto thought as he launched his three-pronged kunai towards the enemy, but was blocked by Baki's kunai. Baki looked at the kunai, and was interested in the design as it was different from the others. Until he remembered where he saw them, he remembered the legend, that used these kunais to decimate an army. Are these? Baki wondered before he picked the kunai up with his hands, and noticed the kanji in the handle. Wrong move Naruto set before flashing towards the kunai he previously thrown. 
All they saw was a yellow flash before Naruto appeared behind Baki and slammed a Rasengan into his back, and he went flying and crashing into the ground completely out. Naruto ducked under a fan swing from Tamari and gave her a punch to the stomach, making her buckle in pain. Naruto punched Tamari and jumped to the side to avoid a barrage of Senbon thrown by Konkuro's puppet. Naruto quickly picked another kunai and threw a Konkuro's real body. Konkuro fumbled between his weapons when he saw Naruto throw the same kunai, he used to take out his sensei who was Jomin. Konkuro did the only thing he thought and jumped away far enough from the kunai's reach. Naruto jumped from the chibi as sand was starting to gather around his feet, trying to snare him in place. He approached Baki. He was still alive although barely. Naruto picked Baki up and quickly stored him in a stasis seal. What the hell was that? Konkuro asked while fear clearly splashed in his voice. The blonde in front of them just took out their sensei like he was nothing. Idiot, don't you remember history from the academy? Tamari asked as she recovered from the blow Naruto delivered her. Seeing Konkuro oblivious face Tamari decided to explain. That technique, that yellow flash is the same the fourth Okage used that gave him the name of yellow flash. He used a technique of his creation that allowed him to teleport to the kunais he threw and used it to kill almost 1000 shinobis from Iwa in a flash. He alone won the war Tamari explained, and Konkuro turned to the blonde who was busy dodging the sand. I see you know history very well a voice whispered just behind Tamari's ear. She turned her head slightly and was greeted by no one other than Naruto. Konkuro just had enough to blink. He was watching Naruto dodge the sand when suddenly he appeared right behind Tamari. How? Tamari asked stuttering clearly afraid of Naruto. He possessed a technique that allowed the fourth Okage to kill an entire battalion of shinobi in an instant. When I punched you in the stomach, I left my mark on you, Naruto simply replied, before giving her a quick chop to the back of her head knocking her out. He quickly flashed to the ground with an unconscious Tamari, and sealed in stasis scroll as well. You bastard, Konkuro growled from the top of the chippy, before sending his puppet to attack Naruto. You should be grateful I didn't kill your sister Naruto said in an emotionless voice. Konkuro simply gazed upon Naruto's blood-red eyes and was starting to feel sleepy. Release Konkuro said and flared his chakra breaking Naruto's hypnotic eye. Wind style. Vacuum wind bullet Shukaku set before slamming his hand in his stomach and expelling a very large ball of compressed wind. The ball itself was bigger than Naruto himself. Naruto gripped his fan and, channeling chakra through it, he swatted the bullet away making the ground shake from the pressure and power. Naruto jumped to the side to avoid Konkuro's puppet and he noticed that the puppet's blades were filled with poison. I need to take him out, so I can focus on Gar, Naruto thought before he dashed towards Konkuro's puppet. Naruto used his Sharingan and quickly found the chakra strings Konkuro was using to control his puppet. Naruto channeled chakra trough one of his kunais and used it to sever the strings, making the puppet fall into the ground. Naruto quickly appeared next to the fallen puppet and drove a Rasengan to it shattering it to pieces. Bastard, Konkuro said to Naruto as he lost his best weapon. What can you do now? Naruto asked pissing off Konkuro and making him jump from the Ichibi's head and run straight for Naruto. Naruto smirked when he noticed how easy it was to rattle Konkuro. Konkuro quickly arrived near Naruto and tried a horizontal slash only to Naruto duck. Naruto quickly rose up and trapped his arms disarming him of his kunai. Naruto grabbed him tightly by the arm and flinged him through the air and slamming him into the ground. Naruto quickly placed his hand into Konkuro and placed a sleeping seal. Once Konkuro was disabled he sealed him as well inside a stasis scroll. Now that's done, it's only you, Naruto said eyeing Shikaku. Ai Shikaku yelled as he fired a few more wind bullets that in this case were more like the size of people themselves. Naruto swiftly dodged them and watched as they collided with the barrier, but it didn't even waver. That the barrier is holding even though it's powered by clones Naruto thought. Naruto analyzed Shikaku and noticed he was very slow. He hadn't moved since he was released so Naruto would take that as an advantage. Naruto took out a single shuriken. He placed it on his pointer finger in his right hand. Naruto molded wind chakra and slowly expelled it to the shuriken. Soon enough the shuriken started spinning, and around it the wind started spinning as well creating a circular saw. Shuriken wind blade Naruto set and threw the shuriken. The shuriken went flying with impressive speed towards Shukaku, who remained in place as his mobility was inexistent. The shuriken arrived near Shukaku and swiftly and without much trouble, it cut right through his right arm, severing it completely and making it fall to the ground. The arm fell limply to the ground, and started crumpling away until it remained nothing but sand on the ground. Although Shukaku just had his left arm severed he didn't seem to be in any type of pain. The entertain me Uzumaki Shukaku yelled, and the sand above Shukaku had started moving, and something could be seen popping out. Naruto narrowed his eyes to the figure emerging, and saw that it was Gara himself. Gara placed his hands in the tiger seal and said, play possum jutsu and promptly fell asleep, Gara leaned forward, and his body went completely limp. Just as Gaara fell asleep, Shikaku's eyes glowed yellow and stayed like that showing that it was Shikaku who was now in control. I'm free. 
I am going to kill you, and then destroy everything, Shikaka yelled as he was happy to be free once again. He looked down and saw Naruto staring at him. Seeing Naruto, Shikaku immediately went into action trying to crush the blonde and leave the barrier, so he could have fun. Wind style, vacuum wind bullet, Shikaku said and started expelling compressed wind bullets towards Naruto who was forced to start evasive maneuvers. Naruto watched very carefully as they hit the barrier. He couldn't allow Shikaku to roam free through the village, or he would destroy it. Fire style, great dragon fire jutsu Naruto said and unleashed a big fire dragon towards Shikaku. Naruto swinged his fan and empowered the flames making them wider and bigger. The flames were almost the size of Shikaku himself. Shikaku let out a roar, and the flames were dispersed into nothing. Shikaku flexed his tail and tried to squash Naruto, but he jumped to the side to avoid it. The tail regressed back, but this time it stayed just above Shikaku's mouth. Suddenly black and blue chakra could be seen floating in the air and gathering around Shikaku's mouth. The chakra started gathering and compressing itself in ball just outside of Shikaku's mouth. Is that what I think it is? Naruto asked when he watched the ball of chakra form itself very much like Naruto used his Rasengan. It's a Biju bomb, and I don't think your clone-powered barrier can withstand that Karama said. Even though Shikaku was the weakest of the nine, a Biju bomb is still strong. Let's see if this weapon truly lives to its name, Naruto said before gripping his fan tight. Shikaku stopped gathering chakra in the ball, and suddenly fired it with tremendous speed. Naruto watched the purple ball coming towards him. Naruto grabbed his fan and placed it in front of him, his right hand grabbing the hilt, while his left hand grabbed the other end. The fan was acting like a shield in front of Naruto. Reflection Naruto said just before the bomb hit the fan. The Biju bomb collided with the fan, and at first nothing happened, but suddenly the bomb exploded, but, instead of blowing Naruto, it was completely reflected towards Shikaku. The amount of pressure being put in the fan made Naruto kneel and ground beneath crack, but he was able to withstand the bomb, and the force of the explosion was sent towards Shikaku. Naruto placed the fan in his back, and cleaned a bit of sweat, that was dripping from the side of his face. That went well, Naruto thought. Now you believe what I said about the fan Kurama said in a sarcastic voice. Yes, now let's end this, Naruto replied and watched as the smoke cleared, and revealed a fully scorched Shikaku with his right arm missing as well. Naruto concentrated and focused his chakra. Suddenly right beneath Shikaku golden chains erupted from the ground and pinned him to the ground. Shikaku was fully trapped, he had chains wrapped around his tail, mouth and the majority of his body, making him unable to do a single movement. Bat. Ox. Dog. Boar. Naruto went through the hand signs and clapped his hands together. He slammed his right hand on the ground, and Kanji started flowing out of it and going towards Shikaku and forming a ring around him. Five point demonic suppression seal Naruto said, and the Kanji started glowing. Shikaku yelled in pain as his chakra was being forced back into the seal. All the shinobis stopped their fighting and looked at the arena where Shikaku was howling in pain. You are not going anywhere, Naruto said. Naruto reinforced the chains as he could feel Shikaku trying to break them free and get away from the seal. Shikaku's form started to waver, and the sand slowly started crumpling and flowing back into Gar. A few seconds later, and there was nothing but a ball of sand floating in the air. The ball of sand was becoming smaller and smaller by the second, when suddenly all the sand disappeared, and Gar fell to the ground completely unconscious. Naruto approached Gar and saw his new seal in Gar's neck. It formed a complete circle around Gar's main seal. Naruto looked carefully at him and noticed a few irregularities. The main seal had no suppressive seals in it, and no safe hatch. At this point Gar's seal was nothing more than an advanced storage seal. This is why Gar is so unstable Naruto thought before approaching him and also placing in a stasis scroll, putting him with his team. Naruto took a few deep breaths and dropped the barrier while shifting his eyes towards the roof where the Kage's battle was taking place. With Hinata, Hinata had just received orders from Kakashi, and went to join forces with Tsubusa, so they could bring the pain to the invading forces. Hinata quickly located Tsubusa and Haku and jumped towards them. We have orders Tsubusa Hinata said as she saw watch Tsubusa behead a sound shinobi with his kubikirabacho. Which are? Tsubusa asked. We are to group up and start sweeping the streets while evacuating and providing protection to the civilians. When the civilians are evacuated, we are to launch a counter-attack Hinata explained. Let's go then, Zabuza said as he placed his blade to his back. They were about to leave, when they saw a yellow flash. They narrowed their eyes and saw Naruto just arrive near them. Naruto-kun? Hinata asked surprised to see him. What are you doing here, she asked. I'm a reinforced clone. Boss sent me to team up with all of you and provide protection to you as well Naruto explained, and they all nodded. They all withdrew their weapons, Naruto picked a couple of three-pronged kunais, Haku took out Senbon, and Hinata picked her daggers. They quickly left the arena and made their way towards the middle of the village, indicating the evacuation paths to the civilians. They were about to leave when a group of ten sound shinobis jumped in front of them. Naruto quickly sensed their chakra levels, and they were ordinary chunins. What do we have where? The obvious sound leader asked. 
a Jonan and a couple of kids, he said while the rest of the crew laughed. Obviously, these sound shinobi weren't watching the chunin exams or they would have seen just what these kids could do. It's time for the flash to resurface Naruto said, and got confused looks from Zabuza and Haku. He smirked and threw one of his special kunais towards the enemy. They all laughed when the kunai didn't hit anyone, and Simple landed harmlessly on the ground in the middle of them. Don't blink Naruto said to his team and disappeared in a yellow flash. All Zabuza was able to see was a yellow flash. Naruto disappeared from view, and when Zabuza saw him once again all of the sound shinobi fell to the ground dead, their throats slashed. That was Zabuza said, but trailed off as he pieced together who Naruto really was. You are the son of the yellow flash, aren't you? Zabuza asked, but the answer seemed pretty obvious. Yes, my father was Namikaze Minato, Kano has yellow flash and the fourth Okage, and also Achiha Madara's son Naruto explained, and got disbelief looks from Zabuza and Haku, who had her eyes widened. I'm done trying to figure you out Zabuza said laughing. Tell me, how long can you use that technique? Zabuza asked. It was a pain in the ass to create the seals. I can use it, since I became Genin, Naruto explained. Unbelievable Zabuza said while shaking his head in disbelief. Let's continue Zabuza said, and they grouped together and dashed once again through the streets. Hanata and Naruto said turning to her use your Byakugan and see where we are needed. This section is cleared Naruto explained, and Hanata nodded before activating her Byakugan without any seals. She guessed to what she saw. The academy is under siege, she said and got disbelief looks from Naruto. The academy, he asked incredulously what about the barrier, he asked. There is no barrier. There's sound and sand shinobi trying to force entry, but Iruka sensei and couple other chunins are holding them off she explained. Let's hurry then. I can't teleport all of you with the flying thunder god jutsu since I'm only a clone, and we will take too long if we walk, Naruto said and got confused looks from the rest of the team. If he couldn't transport them, and they couldn't walk what else were they going to do? This might feel a bit uncomfortable Naruto said before activating his Kamui and sucking Zabuza, Haku and Hinata into it. He quickly disappeared as well, leaving no trace of either of them. Academy. At the academy things weren't looking pretty. The Ruka and the other teachers were trying to hold off the enemy until Shinobi could arrive, but they wouldn't last much longer. The Chunin that was powering the barrier was tricked when a sand Shinobi transformed into a Kanoha Shinobi, and infiltrated the barrier killing the one powering it. The students were all scared. The enemy managed to collapse the tunnels leading to the bunkers, and since the barrier was down the only keeping them alive was, were the teachers, that were battling fiercely, to protect the lives of their students, by preventing the enemy from entering the academy. Eureka this doesn't look good, one of the teachers said. He was clearly tired, he was sweating from every place, and was breathing very hard. Even though he wasn't fatally injured he was filled with small cuts and bruises from their fight. We can't do much. We must hold it until reinforcements arrive, Eureka said. Iruka was also running low on chakra. Even though he was quite skilled for a chunin a couple of chunins couldn't fend off 15 sand chunins indefinitely. Just give up. You can't win, the obvious team leader said as he watched the teachers breathing heavily. They already managed to kill a couple of teachers, but these two were proving rather difficult. They were managing to keep them at bay, by launching long-range jutsus and weapons. Iruka behind you the other teacher yelled. Looks like the exhaustion was finally catching up to them as a sand chunin managed to sneak up on Iruka. Iruka turned his head to see who was behind him when he noticed a kunai going for his throat. Iruka resigned to his fate as he couldn't do anything more to dodge, his chakra reserves were empty, and he was tired, and running out of weapons. He had his eyes closed, and was expecting the pain, when he heard lightning blade. Iruka opened his eyes to see a hand enveloped in lightning piercing right through the sand shinobi's chest. The shinobi hit the ground dead, he didn't even scream. He was dead the moment Naruto pierced him. Naruto Iruka said stuttering. Don't worry Iruka sensei. We will take care of the rest, Naruto said before space seemed to bend, and from his eyes popped the rest of his team Zabuza, Haku, and Hinata. What the hell was that brat? Zabuza asked feeling a bit disorientated. The space-time ninjus is similar to my flying thunder god jutsu. Take care of them, while I gather everyone inside the academy, and put up a barrier, Naruto said, and the rest of his team, dashed to the remaining 14 shinobis. In less than 5 minutes every single one of them was dead. Between Hinata's gentle fist, Haku's sen bone and Zabuza's sword no one stood a chance. My god, Iruka said stuttering as he watched Hinata fight and sweep the enemy, as if they were nothing more than ants. Hinata seemed to be dancing and flowing through the attacks of the enemy. Her Byakugan allowed her to pinpoint and track each enemy. She only needed to touch the enemy once, she honored the traditional style named as the gentle fist. One simple touch and the enemy would fall to the ground dead. Hinata had many to accomplish this, she could open the gate of death making their heart explode, she could crack the chakra core, destroying the chakra network killing the enemy, or if she didn't have access to such places. She would use her Jukin with lightning, and infusing it through the enemy's network frying it and killing the enemy, she truly was a goddess of death. Iruka sensei what happened to the barrier? 
Naruto asked, breaking Iruka of his thoughts. The barrier seals he created weren't supposed to come crashing very easily. It would require a powerful attack to destroy it. One San Shinobi transformed into a Kanoha one, and infiltrated the academy. He also managed to collapse the evacuation tunnels, Iruka explained. I understand. It's very dangerous to evacuate so many students through the middle of the streets, so I'll put another barrier, up Naruto explained, and Iruka sighed in relief. It looked like his students were going to pull through. Tabuza hauled him off while I replaced the barrier, Naruto said, and he nodded before his team took defensive stances watching for any hostile shinobi, while Naruto was doing his work. Naruto noticed all the seal tags in the all were destroyed, and he needed to create new ones. He quickly took out a few empty tags from his storage seals, and started writing seals. Naruka just watched in fascination the speed and quality at which Naruto drew the seals. It obviously proved that Naruto was very skilled in fuinjutsu. Naruto quickly finished the tags, and Naruka examined them. Each kanji was perfectly drawn, not a speck of imperfection could be seen. It almost looked like a work of art. At inside Naruto set, and Naruka went to collect the other teacher that was unconscious but not severely hurt. Once inside Naruto made a shadow clone, and he made his way towards the outside of the academy. He slammed the tag on the wall, and said, Four cornered barrier and yellowish barrier erupted completely covering the academy grounds. Naruto's clone sat down in lotus position, and started concentrating to increase the power of the barrier. The reinforced clone on the outside on the barrier said Iruka sensei you are safe now. We will continue to look through the village. Naruto turned away to join up with his team and move to another sector of the village, when they saw a big explosion that rose into the skies. Explosion sight minutes earlier. He was running through the streets trying his best to help out where he could. Dari and C teamed up with Aomoi and Karen, and went to grab Yujido at the infirmary. He quickly looked at the horizon and noticed a three-headed snake breaking through the walls of Konoha, and starting to wreak havoc through the village. The shinobis were throwing jutsu after jutsu, but nothing seemed to work. Push him out of the village, one of the shinobis, yelled as they threw explosive kunai towards the snake, but that didn't even screech the snake as he continued on her path. They were quickly running out of options when they heard what it seemed to be someone rapping and a lame one at that. You're going down full, you full because I'm the mighty killer B, B rapped while running through and jumping through the roofs and heading to face the snake. I'll take care of that worm B set before fully transforming into his Biju. There standing in the middle of Kanoha was the Hachibi. B quickly wrapped the snake with his tentacles and threw it the air so she couldn't do any more destruction. All of his eight tails quickly bent over his head ending just above his mouth. Black and blue chakra was seen gathering around it and compressing it to form a perfect sphere. Biju bomb B set and shot the ball towards the snake that was in the air. The moment the ball collided it immediately exploded in a show of fire and smoke. Seconds later, as the smoke was starting to clear there was nothing remaining of the snake. He didn't know if she was obliterated or just went back to her reel, but at this point it didn't matter. Kanoha was safe for now. Thanks for the help, B Sana Kanoha Shinobi set before picking up an injured comrade and going to the hospital. Kanoha's walls. One of Naruto's clones was running through the village clearing shinobis and helping civilians where he could. Due to him being a standard clone, even with his Kamui it was risky to engage in Taijutsu, but he could always rely on Ninjutsu, and he was really good at it. Pushed them back Naruto heard a shinobi yelling, and made his way towards him to provide as much help as he could. Even if he was a clone at least he could be bait for slowing the enemy down. He arrived at the destination and saw a group of Kanoha shinobis throwing jutsu and weapons, trying to delay a group of about 200 sand shinobis led by the Kazukage into the village. However, the group just kept throwing wind jutsus, and having the Kazukage in there made sure they weren't harmed due to his gold sand dust. It wasn't looking good as the enemy kept coming. If help didn't arrive it would be a massacre. Naruto arrived at their location and quickly surveyed the area looking for anyone he might know, he eyes landed on Unko. Unko what's happening? Naruto asked. She looked around to find the annoying blonde. Naruto, what are you doing here? Unko asked. Are you the reinforcements we asked? She asked hoping that the only reinforcements that came weren't Naruto alone. I wasn't sent by anyone. I'm just a clone, boss is taking care of Shukaku at the stadium Naruto explained, and Anko stared dumbly at him before scowling. That's my luck, a fucking clone, Anko said. If you explain the situation maybe I could help Naruto said flatly trying not to cause many problems, especially in the middle of an invasion. Very simple. The Kazukage is leading 200 shinobis into the village, and we aren't able to slow them, down Anko said, and stared at Naruto, waiting for his miraculous answer. I think I have just the jutsu for this Naruto said smoking making Anko raise an eyebrow. But I'm just a clone so it will take a couple of minutes to prepare. Can you hold them off until then? Naruto asked. I hope it's worth it Anko said before yelling, hold off for a couple of minutes more. Yes, the shinobis that were with her yelled. There were very few in number compared to an overwhelming force of 200 trained shinobis. Naruto sat down in lotus position and clapped his hands together as if praying. 
He slowly drove them apart a few inches from each other, and sparks started flying between them. He continued concentrating, and after a few minutes the sparks gathered in a blue sphere that was shining. Okay Anko it's ready, Naruto said and Anko turned around to see the jutsu. That's it. A small blue sphere Anko said not believing her eyes. So much work just for that. No faith Naruto said smirking and launched the ball into the sky. The moment the ball hit the cloud level it suddenly expanded in a bright flash of white. Everyone stopped and looked up to see what was happening. Just as the light died down the clouds started gathering and sky was getting darker and darker by the moment. Thunders could easily be heard emanating the clouds. Witness my best lightning jutsu Naruto said, and everyone was focused in him. Naruto channeled lightning chakra to his hand, and it started sparkling. He sent a beam into the sky, and the thunders seemed to join and gather into a single massive one. The Kazukage was watching the skies very carefully and when he noticed the dragon, he figured it wasn't going to be good for them. Take cover the Kazukage yelled at his forces, but it was already too late. Lightning style, Kirin, Naruto said, and his dragon roared his way towards the sand shinobi. The Kazukage tried to block with his sand, but it was far too slow. He didn't even have time to blink as the dragon disappeared in a flash, and the ground where they stood exploded. Everything was ripped apart, trees, stones even the earth itself was destroyed, and where once stood the mighty Kazukage, and his 200 shinobis was now nothing more than a 100 meter wide crater. Bunko and the other shinobis didn't manage to see what exactly happened. All they saw, was a flash of light and the ground exploding. The dust cleared, and there was no one remaining alive. The ones that survived the initial explosion were simply electrocuted and left in ashes due to the power of the thunder. Holy shit brat Anko yelled shaking his shoulders, and her eyes white into the size of dinner plates. The reaction of the rest of the shinobis was pretty much the same. They were all busting their asses, to keep the enemy away and Naruto arrives, fires a very powerful lightning jutsu, and it's all over, just like that. I told you to have faith, Naruto said panting. Even though the jutsu didn't take much chakra the concentration necessary to use the jutsu was very high for a simple clone. I'm dispelling now, Naruto said and Anko nodded dumbly. So what now? One of the shinobis asked. With the kages. Edo Tensei, a forbidden technique that summons a soul from the pure world to the world of the living, in pure world, in order to do the biting of the summoner. Besides moral ramifications this technique is considered forbidden because it costs a human live to anchor the soul to the world. This technique was invented the Senju Tabrama, the second Hokage, although the reasons to why he did are still unknown. The moment the four's coffins opened the shinobi inside were instantly recognized. They were all legends and powerful in their own way. The first coffin was a tall man with tan skin, dark eyes and waist-length black hair, typically styled in a center-parted fringe that framed his face. His attire took the form of the standard shinobi dress of his ear, consisting of dark red traditional armor, similar to that of samurai, worn over a simple black suit. This armor was constructed from numerous metal plates, formed into multiple protective guards along his body, in particular, chest, shoulders, thighs and forearms. Each color of his shoulder guards bore the senju symbol emblazoned on them. This man was none other than Senju Hashirama the first Hokage himself, and the original Shinobi no Kami or, God of Shinobi. In the second coffin was a woman, she had long, bright red hair and large pupilless eyes. She wore an elaborate high-colored kimono with the Yuzushigakure symbol on the back of the obi, which was tied around her waist. Her hair was arranged in buns with hairpins in them, and three clips in the front. She also wore a dark shade of red lipstick, and had a violet-colored diamond mark on her forehead. She also wore tags with kanji written on them in her hair diesels. She also carried a huge red scroll on her back, similar to Jiri. She was Uzumaki Mido, Kanoha's red princess, and the wife of Senju Hashirama. In the third coffin was a tall man, fair-skinned man with white, shaggy hair, dark-colored eyes and three red markings on his face, one under each of his eyes, and one on his chin. In most cases, he wore the wartime attire, armor emblazoned with the Senju symbol worn over a simple black suit, with a distinctive white fur collar. This armor was constructed from numerous blue metal plates, formed into multiple protective guards along his body, in particular, chest, waist, shoulders and upper arms. This clothing was accompanied by sandals, and a hapuri engraved with the Kanohe emblem, in the place of the more traditional forehead protector. He was Senju Taburama, Kanohe's water dragon, and the second Hokage of Kanohe. In the last coffin was another woman, she had a slender, but feminine build, fair skin, blue eyes, crimson hair with strands that framed both sides of her. She was wearing the traditional black onbu pants with white tape around the ankles. Around her chest she had onbu chest plate above simple black suit. She had gloves in each arm that covered her entire arm almost reaching her shoulders. On her back, a 28 inches long black katana with red hilt. She was Uzumaki, former Senju, Kashina, Kanoha's red death, wife of the fourth Hokage, but most importantly mother of Uzumaki Naruto. This isn't good the Hokage muttered under his breath, and the Raikage and Jureya couldn't help but to agree. 
After all, standing in front of them were four Kage level shinobis, not to mention Orochimaru himself, and the fact that being an Edo Tensei provides the shinobi with limitless chakra and immortality didn't help much. Where am I? Kashina asked as she surveyed her surroundings. The last thing she remembered was saying goodbye to her son. Edo Tensei? Taburama asked out loud snapping Kashina from her thoughts. That man brought us back with my forbidden technique, ironic Taburama said. Edo Tensei, Kashina thought as she watched who she was going to fight against. It was a bulky man with blonde hair, so she assumed he would Akumo Nin, Jiraiya and Saratobi Hirzen. Hirzen seemed older than what she remembered, so it must have been some time. Hirzen, Kashina called out getting his attention, how long has it been, she asked. 14 years, he replied sullenly. How's Naruto doing, she asked. She felt bad for leaving Naruto alone and leaving him with such burden, but there wasn't any other choice at the time. Even though the civilians made his life a nightmare he still turned out in splendid shinobi, you would be proud of him, the Hokage said with a small smile he even found love, the Hokage said. That's good. Grandmother always said that to support the hate of being a Jinchuriki I should fill myself with love, right? She asked turning towards Senju Mito who was quite observing the redhead. Kashina chan She asked not believing her eyes. Her little girl grew so much since the last time she saw her. It was a shame she was already dead and apparently, she left a son behind. Good to see you again grandmother she said smiling. Ah, take that Taburama my line continued on while you were always brooding, around Hashirama yelled, pointing towards his brother. Taburama replied crossing his arms. Orochimaru remained quiet while they were interacting, and found it very interesting that Kashina called Mido her grandmother. Care to explain why you called Mido your grandmother Kashina-chan? Orochimaru asked. Why should I answer to you pedophile Kashina replied. Orochimaru got pissed and forced his control on her edo Tensei, forcing her to answer all of his questions. My true name is Senju Kashina, I'm the daughter of Senju Tsunade and Kato Dan she replied in a monotone. If Orochimaru was surprised, he didn't show it, but he always thought that Tsunade's daughter had died. Tsunade only had one daughter and she died Orochimaru replied. He was getting very interested. My death was fake to stop the CRA from taking place. With me dead and Tsunade leaving the village we were both safe Kashina replied, and Orochimaru smirked. Naruto was the perfect vessel, the strength of the Senju body with the power of the Sharingan. Delicious, he shall be mine, Orochimaru thought. It really was a bad decision on your part, brother Hashirama said to his brother regarding the CRA law that was created by the second Hokage. It was always for the betterment of the village, Taburama replied. I don't doubt that, but you are too distant and cold. You are always brooding around like the Ichihas. You need a strong woman to straighten you up, Hashirama said and Taburama remained impassive. Maybe you should set him up with someone Mido-chan, Hashirama said turning to his beloved wife Senju Mido. She didn't age a day she he last saw her, and her beauty remained unparalleled, to him at least. We're all dead Hashirama Kun Mido replied with a deadpan expression. My bad Hashirama replied chuckling and scratching the back of his head in embarrassment. The Hokage, Raikage and Jurei were all watching the interaction with fascination. It saddened the old Hokage's heart to see his former's teachers and some of the greatest shinobi of the leaf brought back from the dead to serve under a despicable man. I should have killed him when I had the chance the Hokage thought with Shin. All the evil Orochimaru had brought could have been stopped if he had been strong back then. Enough talk, kill them all Orochimaru commanded, and they all took their stances. Hashirama and Taburama crouched and took their taijutsu stance, Mido picked the scroll up, and Kashina took out her sword. The Kanoha defenders braced themselves for what was coming. How do you want to do this? The Raikage asked. Five shinobis against three hardly seemed fair to anyone. Five against three, doesn't add up very well, Jiraiya said. Don't count me in. I'll just watch for now Orochimaru said smoking. I'll take my former's teachers, Jiraiya you take Mido, since she fights with seals and the Raikage will take Kashina, the Hokage explained, and they both nodded. Raikage dono don't underestimate Kashina she almost as fast as you, the Hokage explained, and he rose an eyebrow. He knew that Kashina was a very powerful Kanoichi, but fast he will have to see. Hokage's battle, Hashirama and Taburama as Hokage's and the third as Hiruzen. At ready Hiruzen, we can't control our bodies, but we will try and help as we go Hashirama said. It's a shame to see you in this condition. As Sir Toby Hiruzen, Sandame Hokage of Kanohigakure, I shall defeat you both the Hokage said as he removed his Hokage's robes, revealing the armor underneath. A full body black suit with mesh armor underneath and steel plates in the arms. The Hokage suddenly started running heading towards Hiruzen. Hashirama arrived first, and tried a spin kick making Hiruzen crouch to avoid it. Hashirama continued his attacks with a few punches, but Hiruzen blocked them all. Hiruzen crouched and tried to sweep his legs, making Hashirama jump up and back. As Hashirama was pushed back Taburama jumped into the fray. Taburama quickly arrived near Hiruzen and jumped over him. Taburama quickly turned and threw a set of punches trying to catch Hiruzen of guard. Taburama jumped up and tried a drop kick that Hiruzen caught. 
Erzin spinned and threw Taburama into the air. Even in his old age, Erzin was still considered the most powerful man in the village, and this was the proof of it. Managing to hold your own in Taijutsu against two Hokages at his old age was no easy feat. My turn now, Erzin said, and the Hokages braced themselves for his attack. Erzin went through a couple of hand seals and said, Fire style. Fire dragon bullet and sent a torrent of fire that engulfed the Hokages. The flames were covering completely the Hokages, but they remained still. A benefit of the Edo Tensei is his immortal body. Hirazan, seeing that his technique wasn't having effect he poured more chakra into it, turning the flames with white hot. Taburama seeing the spike in Hirazan's chakra, flashed through hand seals. Water style. Water wall Taburama sat and started expelling water through his mouth, the four to wall around both Okages cancelling the fire attack. Water style, exploding water wave, Taburama said but instead of using his chakra, to create the water like normal users he simply gathered the moist in the atmosphere, and used it to power his attack. The water started swirling around him until he unleashed a massive tsunami heading towards Hirazan. Earth style. Earth wall Hirazan said before spitting out dirt from his mouth. The moment the dirt hit the floor it sprouted into the air forming a wall to shield him from the impeding tsunami. As the water calmed down Hirazan, went through another set of hand seals earth style, earth dragon bullet, and a dragon's head rose from the ground, and started shooting multiple globs of earth towards the Hokages. Fire style. Fire Dragon Bomb hears and set, and combined the earth bullets with fire, turning them into almost lava. The lava-style bloodline allows the user to merge earth and fire chakra to create lava-style chakra, and thus use lava attacks. However, anyone can combine the elements externally however the power is significantly lower. The Hokages started evasive maneuvers to evade the bullets as they were running towards Hirazan. Hashirama quickly arrived near Hirazan and both engaged in Taijutsu battle. As the shinobi code dictates use every advantage possible and Hashirama set to do so. He dipped his feet in water and threw it into Hirazan's eyes, blinding him momentarily. Hashirama took advantage of his blindness, and unleashed a combo of punches, and kicks trying to end Hirazan permanently. They couldn't control themselves, so they couldn't stop from using low blows. Taburama jumped into the fight as well. However, Hirazan didn't go down as easily as they thought. Using the momentum at which he received the punches and kicks, he discreetly placed explosive tags on both Okages. He quickly regained his sense again and broke the taijutsu fight by planting a feet into Hashirama's chest and sending him flying. Elise, Hirazan said with his right hand in the tiger seal, and both explosive tags detonated blowing up Hashirama's leg and Taburama's arm. Now this would have been enough to kill any shinobi but the Edo Tensei allowed the body to regenerate. Hirazan watched in amazement as the leg and arm that were destroyed, reformed themselves as if nothing happened. Wood style. Deep forest creation Hashirama said, and trees started emerging from the ground dripping through everything. The tiles, the earth wall, nothing stopped the onslaught of the trees. Hirazan was forced to take evasive maneuvers, but in the end the trees caught him and snared him by the ankles and arms. Hirazan forced himself to move under his confinement, and bit his thumb drawing blood. He stretched and placed his hands near a branch of a tree. Summoning Jutsu Hirazan said, and smoke erupted from where he placed his hand. As the smoke cleared it showed a figure, his body and tail was covered by white fur which protrudes from his sleeves and pants. He has long white hair that reached into his back and long sideburns and a goatee. He wears a black suit with mesh armor underneath, over which he wears a sleeveless kimono shirt with white fur trimmings and markings reminiscent of tiger stripes on it, which is held closed by a sash. He was Emma the Monkey King and boss summon of the Monkey Clan. Orchimaru, I warn you Emma said watching here is entrapped in the trees. Let's end him now. Transform into the adamantine staff here's and said. The SM is set and jumped into a branch and said transformation jutsu. Adamantine staff. Enma was engulfed in smoke, and when it cleared Enma was no longer a monkey, but a staff. The staff quickly crushed the trees and freed here's and from his prison before resting in his hands as he took a defensive stance. Hiraya vs Senju Mido. Hiraya gulped as he watched Mido remove the scroll from her back. After all Mido was an Uzumaki, and their sealing techniques weren't to be underestimated in the least. Uzumaki Mido did defeat the Kayubi when Madara attacked at the Valley of the End, and sealed him inside of her without dying. Senju Mido was one of the few combat sealers. As long she had chakra her possibilities in battle were endless, and since Shireya was a seal master himself, he knew very well the foe he was up against. I wonder if I should use Sage Mode Jureya considered in thought. Jureya decided that he shouldn't allow Mido to do anything and rushed her engaging in Taijutsu. Mido seeing Jureya running towards her, quickly placed the scroll on her back and took a defensive stance. Jurei arrived near her and threw a set of punches that she easily blocked. Jurei tried to sweep her legs making her jump. While in the air Jurei tried to punch her, but she grabbed his arm and supporting herself, she spinned midair and delivered a spin kick to Jurei. Jurei stumbled back but quickly regained his position. He nursed his neck before going towards her once again. 
He quickly arrived near and threw a right hook. Her attention was focused on his right arm, opening her defenses for Juryu's left hand to slip through and hit her sending her flying to the ground. She got up, as if nothing had happened, and they both rushed each other once again. The moment they arrived near each other Mido jumped over him. She placed her right hand on Juryu's back applying a seal and jumping away from him. Juryu didn't know what happened and as such discarded this skirmish as unimportant until he saw Mido place her right hand in Tiger Sign. Fuinjutsu. Electric seal activate Mido said, and the seal on Juryu's back glowed and started sending electric shocks through Juryu's body, making him buckle in pain, until he exploded in a poof of smoke. I figured the moment you touched me you applied some seal Juryu said rising from the ground. Ninpu, hair needles, Jureya said, and his hair extended, before starting to fire hundreds of hair needles towards Mido who remained in place. Mido spread her hands from each other. From her sleeves emerged two tags, one for each hand. Barrier technique. Shock absorption seal and a golden barrier appeared in front of her, easily blocking all of the sand bones. The moment they hit the barrier, it didn't even waver or buckle from the pressure. Jureya seeing his attacks was useless, stopped launching sand bone and decided to try another approach. Fire style. Giant fire blast Jureya set before flashing through hand seals and sending a wall of fire towards Mido, who remained impassive to any attack Jureya threw. Mido took out sealing tags, however these seemed slightly different. Barrier technique, chakra absorption seal, Mido set in what seemed to be a black hole erupted between her arms, and engulfed the fire attacks leaving no trace of it. She can absorb chakra as well, damn, Jureya muttered out loud. Mido really was a fearsome opponent. She managed to block a physical and chakra powered attacks with nothing more than ink and paper. Mido quickly opened her big scroll and turned it towards Jureya, who raised an eyebrow in confusion. Dragon Bomb Mido set before seal from the scroll started glowing. Suddenly from the seal a massive torrent of fire shaped in the form of a dragon's head, erupted and headed towards Jureya, scorching everything on its path. Earth style, Earth wall, Jureya said, and wall of earth rose from the ground to shield Jureya from the incoming flames. That fire attack had a very large reach and Jureya wouldn't be able to dodge in time. The flames connected with the wall, but it was strong enough to withstand the pressure. Can't believe I'm getting my ass kicked by someone who isn't even using ninjutsu Jureya thought shaking his head in shame. Earth style. Underworld swamp Jureya said as the ground beneath Mido suddenly liquefied making her fall into the swamp and burying half of her body. The earth quickly hardened trapping her. Jureya suddenly appeared above her and yelled Rasengan as he drove a blue chakra sphere right through Mido's chest, destroying everything around it, even the ground. Since Mido had her arms trapped in the swamp she couldn't block or dodge the attack. Jureya jumped back and was watching the cloud of dust starting to settle. He narrowed his eyes as he watched Mido's chest starting to reform. A few seconds later, and it was as if nothing had ever happened. Jureya was so focused in watching Mido reform that he didn't notice three of Mido's Kage Bushins suddenly surround him making a triangle around him. They all pulled a tag that seemed to float in the air. Sealing trap, chakra draining seal, all of the three clones shouted in union and triangular, red colored barrier erupted trapping Jureya inside and starting to drain his chakra. She's stealing my chakra, and fast Jureya thought as he was starting to feel the chakra drainage. If he kept inside, he would be out of chakra in mere minutes. Jureya started forming Rasengan, but noticed that it was being absorbed as well. He needed to create a larger Rasengan, and use it quickly, so Mido didn't have time to absorb it. Giant Rasengan Jureya set before making a Rasengan twice as big as the normal. He quickly slammed the Rasengan on the ground, and the ground exploded upwards breaking the barrier and the clones as well. Jureya cleaned a bit of sweat and jumped back to gain some distance from Mido. Raikage vs Kashina. Who are you? Kashina asked. Why do you want to know? The Raikage asked generously surprised from that question. Even though I hold no love for Kumo I wish to know the name of my opponent Kashina explained. I may, fourth Okage Raikage, the Raikage said and Kashina nodded. Shall we begin? Kashina said before gripping her sword and making the Raikage smirk. Perhaps this wouldn't such a bad fight after all. They both dashed towards each other. The Raikage had, yet to activate his lightning armor as he wanted to get a feel for Kashina's power, so he kept at elite Jonin's speeds. Elbow, the Raikage said as he reached near Kashina, he flexed his elbow to hit her. Kashina swiftly ducked under him, and brought the hilt of her sword upward slamming it against the Raikage's chin, and planting a kick to his chest sending him flying. Dragon Dive Kashina set before flexing her blade and pointing her towards the Raikage. Kashina charged her body with Charka before exploding towards the Raikage at very high speeds, but the Raikage wasn't the fastest man alive for nothing, and managed to deflect it, although barely. Raikage seeing Kashina so up close charged at her, and set Rariado and tried to slam his right arm into Kashina's neck, destroying hit. Kashina simple bent her body backwards and allowed the arm to pass above her without touching her. The moment the Raikage's arm had safely passed above Kashina, she quickly rose up once again. She jumped into the air and using the Raikage's arm as leverage, she snared his head between her legs. 
She tilted down, placing her hands on the ground for leverage once again, and slammed the Raikage into the ground hard, and jumped back to gain some distance. Enough of this child's play the Raikage sat before his chakra spiked, and his body was enveloped in a blue cloak that was sparkling with electricity everywhere. This was the Raikage's most powerful technique, the lightning armor. A technique that, by channeling lightning chakra through the synapses in the external body, it improves the user's reaction time, overall speed and defenses. Pashina seeing her opponent using the fabled lightning style armor, knew she needed something that allowed her to keep up with what will be his new speed. Her husband managed to avoid A's fastest strike by using his flying thunder god jutsu, but she didn't have that at her disposal. Kashina began focusing in channeling wind chakra through her external body. Wind armor Kashina said. By surrounding her body with wind chakra, she can cut down the wind resistance, increasing her overall speed. However, this technique doesn't protect her from anything like the Raikage's. The Raikage disappeared in a blink of an eye and appeared just above Kashina. Guillotine dropped the Raikage set, and tried to perform a drop kick on Kashina. However Kashina, due to her wind armor, managed to jump away and avoid the kick that shattered the ground. Wind slash Kashina said, and she reappeared in an instant where the Raikage destroyed the ground. Channeling wind chakra through her blade she performed a horizontal swing, and the Raikage just had enough time to tilt his head, as the blade passed right above his head cutting a few strands of hair. The Raikage quickly recovered and jumped away. As he landed, he noticed a few drops of blood fall to the ground. He placed his hand on his head and he looked at it, he noticed a bit of blood. Even with my lightning armor she managed to cut me the Raikage thought. It was bad luck in the end, the only thing that can beat lightning is wind. The Raikage was looking carefully at Kashina, before she poofed in smoke. He looked around just in time, to see Kashina appearing next to him trying a horizontal slash across his chest. The Raikage using his lightning reflexes, caught the blade with his bare hands, and slammed a kick into Kashina's chest, and she was sent tumbling to the ground. The Raikage had enough of this, he had to end the battle fast, so he could go and help the others' battles. He focused and brought his lightning armor to full power, making it sparkle even more, and his hair become spikier. Kashina was looking at him when he suddenly disappeared. She didn't even have time to blink as the Raikage repapered right next to her. He grabbed her by the waist and said, light your bomb and slammed her into the ground, completely tearing her apart and blowing up the ground into smithereens. The Raikage jumped and smirked in victory until he noticed that Kashina's body was reforming. A few seconds later she was standing in front of her as if nothing had happened. Damn that Edo Tensei the Raikage thought as he was considering what he could use to end this despicable technique. Kashina walked forward and placed her hand on the ground, touching the Raikage's blood from one of his injuries that Kashina managed to inflict. Kashina spread the blood through her hands and flashed through hand seals, before slamming both hands on the ground. Fu in Jutsu. Gravity well Kashina said, and Kanji erupted from her hands and spread through the area where they were fighting. In less than two seconds the whole area was covered. The Raikage rose in eyebrow in confusion, but when he saw Kashina activated the seal, he almost fell to the ground. The gravity in that area was increased almost five times. She's trying to slow me down, smart the Raikage thought. Infinite Blade Kashina shouted before she disappeared from view. Suddenly the Raikage's skins bursted in blood, revealing shallow cuts covering all of his body. The Raikage buckled in pain, but this sort of wounds wouldn't slow him down. Right Ningu Suter 2, lightning straight the Raikage set before dashing straight forward towards Kashina with his fists caught. The only person to ever this attack was Kashina's husband, Namikaze Minato, but due to the gravity filed the Raikage was slower, and Kashina easily dodged it jumping to the side. Enough of this the Raikage roared before jumping high into the air and saying, drop kick and slammed his feet into the ground, vaporizing all the tiles around the impact, and completely disrupting the seal matrix, making Kashina drop the gravity field. They were about to jump at it once again, when all of them heard a piercing scream from the middle of the arena. All of them stopped their battles and regrouped, shifting their attention to the arena floor, where Shukaku was yelling in pain as he having his chakra suppressed. This chakra, is Shukaku, Taburama said as he was one of the most talented censor to ever live. No doubt, Hashirama replied. Looks like Naruto came through Jureya said, and the old Hokage nodded. What do you mean Naruto came through? Kashina asked in a very sweet voice making all the males gulp and take a step back. Did you put my Sachi, son, against the Bijuu? She asked sweetly grasping her sword. And now now Kashina, he was the one that chose to face the Chibi the Hokage tried to reason with her. Besides, from the looks of it, it looks like he won the Hokage said. Jiraiya didn't say anything, he still remembered the beating he took when he tried to spy on her and Minato. Not even Orochimaru himself said anything as he still remembered all the broken bones he had when he said, the Kashina looked fat. He's approaching Taburama said, and they all noticed a figure arrive near the roof. Naruto jumped up and phased right through the barrier as if it wasn't even there. How the hell did that punk pass through the barrier Tewa yelled. How should I know, Seiken replied. Hey old man, need a hand? Naruto asked before he analyzed the situation. 
He looked around and saw what Orochimaru had done, but his eyes were fixed on the red-haired woman. Mother Naruto said in a low voice, but everyone heard him. Naruto-kun, Kashina said and ran towards her son, but Orochimaru forced his control over her making her stop on her tracks, tears running from her eyes. You dare summon my family, you are going to pay Orochimaru Naruto said, and flared his Sharingan, making it slowly shift into his Mingekyo. His eternal, displayed for the first of the world without any kinjutsu hiding it. Orochimaru was shocked when he noticed the shift in Naruto's eyes, and he felt something he hasn't felt in a long time, fear. Is that? Hashirama asked pointing towards the fan in Naruto's back. It's my grandfather's fan, Hashirama Jiji, Naruto said smirking in Hashirama's and Taburama's eyes almost popped out of their sockets. Madara had a son? Hashirama said not believing his ears. He didn't see that one coming. Yes, you did a wonderful job killing him at the Valley of the End, Naruto said. What? Hashirama yelled, he survived. Hashirama asked and Naruto nodded. Ironic don't you think? Naruto asked and Hashirama got confused. To think the descendants of you two would fall in love, Naruto said. Hashirama and Taburama chuckled at the irony before they focused their attention on the blonde and noticed his eyes. Aminekyo? Taburama asked and sensed his chakra levels, making his eyes widen. His chakra levels are through the roof, they are on par with lower class bidgers. How in the world Taburama said, but Hashirama interrupted him. I sense the Kyubi's chakra in him, it looks like he's the new Jinchuriki Hashirama said, and Taburama nodded as it made sense. It's good to see that my legacy lives on Hashirama said. Naruto, don't go in blindly, they can't be defeated by ordinary means, the Hokage said. I know how the Edo Tensei works, Chiji Naruto said, and Kashina smiled at the affectionate name he had for the third. At least he wasn't alone. How do you know it? It's a forbidden technique, the Hokage asked suspiciously. Remember when I found Orochimaru's abandoned laboratory? Naruto asked and the Hokage nodded. In there I found blood samples as well Orochimaru's notebook on the Edo Tensei Naruto said. The reason I know how it works very well is because I can use it as well Naruto said, and everyone's eyes widened at the statement. Naruto the Hokage asked with a hard voice, I hope you didn't use. I would never sacrifice someone else's life to bring back anyone. Even if it was family, Naruto said and the Hokage sighed in relief. There are three ways to defeat an Edo Tensei Naruto said getting their attention. 1. We can seal the soul away, thus disabling the Edo Tensei permanently. 2. We can vaporize the body completely thus stopping it from reforming or 3rd, since I know the seals, we can force the summon to end the Edo Tensei himself, Naruto explained, and they frowned. Either way it was going to be difficult. Irosenin, Naruto said. Stop calling me that, Jiraiya and the rest sweat dropped. How could they do this in the middle of a fight? Kashina just laughed as she had called him the same when she was alive. I can't use any genjutsu strong enough to force them to release the Edo Tensei, so do you know any sealing technique besides the Shaiki Fujin? Naruto asked. Yes, but it will take time to prepare Jiraiya said, and Naruto nodded. We will hold them until then Naruto said, and everyone rose an eyebrow at the statement. Don't worry Kas and I'm freeing you from Orochimaru's grasp. Now, shall we dance? Naruto asked smirking and grasping the fan on his back. He always wanted to face against powerful opponents, and it didn't get any more powerful than the Hokage's. Flashback. Valley of End. Hashirama and Madara were facing each other getting ready to start their duel. I'll say it one last time Madara, forget this path Hashirama said as he looked at his long date friend. There's no turning back Hashirama. Now, shall we dance? In flashback, Hashirama chuckled at the similarities between Naruto and Madara. It looked like Madara's blood was running strong through his veins, more strongly than Hashirama's own blood. Old man give me fire, Naruto said to the Hokage and he nodded. Fire style, fire dragon bullet, the Hokage said expelling a torrent of white hot fire towards Orochimaru. Fire style, great dragon fire technique, Naruto said before he also started to expel his own stream of fire. He quickly picked his fan and swinged empowering the flames with wind. An inferno was unleashed towards Orochimaru, but they all remained in place. Taburama clapped his hands together, and water started rotating around all of them before exploding towards the incoming flames. A huge cloud of steam erupted blinding everyone except Naruto, who, due to his Sharingan, managed to see the chakra of everyone. Taking advantage of the cloud of steam Naruto quickly threw towards them the last 10 kunais he had with the flying thunder god jutsu seal. The cloud dispersed and everyone remained in the same not moving an inch. Suddenly Hashirama started going through hand seals and said, wood style. Wood spikes. Suddenly a tree sprouted from the ground and started sending wooden spikes towards Naruto and company. Naruto channeled chakra to his gunbai and said gunbai barrier technique. A semicircular purple barrier appeared mid-air intersecting all of the wooden spikes making them fall to the ground. They were all distracted on defending that they didn't notice Kashina blur right through them heading towards Jiraiya. Jiraiya behind you, the Hokage yelled as Kashina appeared next to Jiraiya trying to cleave his head off. The Raikage powered his lightning style armor and dashed at the top of his speed towards Kashina. 
He wasn't going to arrive in time when they all saw a yellow flash appearing next to Jiraiya and slamming Rasengan into Kashina. Erosen and Quicksilver her while she is reforming Naruto yelled out making Jiraiya hurry and place one of his finished tags on Kashina's body. He did well Naruto-kun, I'm sorry we left you all alone, but we loved you very much, I'm proud of you Kashina said as her Edo Tensei was starting to crack, indicating her soul was about to be released. Thank you, Ka-san Naruto said sobbing. He usually never let his emotional guard to anyone other than his more trusted people, but this one was an exception. Kashina was starting to fade away before Naruto approached her and whispered something to her ears, only bringing a smile to her face before fading away completely. You're going down or Chimuru Naruto said glaring at the snake. That was the Raikage started saying before everything fell into place. You're Minato's brat, aren't you? The Raikage asked rhetorically. Yes, I am and by the way Minato was Madara's son Naruto said, at the first two Hukages widened their eyes. Who would have thought that Madara's son would have become Hukage? Enough of this, tell them where Chimuru ordered, and they all dashed towards the leaf defenders. Yuri, how are the tags coming along? Hurry up will you, the Hukage asked. Give me a break. This aren't easy to make Jureya stated. Here they come, the Raikage said, before taking a defensive stance. Let's end this, the Raikage said trying to boost the moral. Naruto dashed towards Hashirama and engaged in Taijutsu. Naruto had dropped the weights a long time ago, if he wanted to keep up with Kages. So, this is the power of a Kage, I need to step up my training, Naruto said as he was being pushed back by Hashirama's raw power. Hashirama threw a right hook that connected with Naruto, and left him slightly dazed. Naruto's Kamui activated just time to see Orochimaru's extended neck phasing right through him. What the hell you pedophile, are you trying to give me a hickey? Naruto smugly asked trying to piss him off. You shouldn't rattle him up, the Hukage said chuckling at his surrogate grandson. I have another ready, Jiraiya stated, and Naruto nodded. Naruto channeled as much chakra as he could into his body, and sent a kick towards Orochimaru and sent him flying. Naruto using his Kamui phased right through Hashirama and jumped back. Naruto crouched and concentrated, golden chains emerged from the ground, and snared Hashirama into the ground. The chains twisted around his ankles snaring him to that spot. Raikage Naruto yelled out before the Raikage abandoned his fight with Taburama, and charging at full speed he set Larry. The Raikage dashed towards Hashirama, who was pinned, at full speed, slamming his arm into him destroying his chest completely. Yuria quickly appeared next to them, and placed the ceiling tag in Hashirama breaking him free. The village is in good hands, I hope we meet again Naruto, although not too soon Hashirama said smiling as his soul was released. The village is in good hands, he could sense that Naruto had a pure heart, and that the will of fire burned brightly in him. That's too down, Naruto said panting. Even though Kurama could refill his chakras reserves at any time, and he had good stamina, this invasion was taking its toll on his body. He already had two matches, one against a Bijuru, he made 2000 clones and now he's here fighting against Kages. He now old man Naruto said towards the Hokage panting, if I don't make Chunin after all this I'm gonna burn all of your Icha Icha books Naruto stated, and the Hokage pulled. Easy there the Hokage said waving his hands. During all of this Orochimaru was gritting his teeth, everything was going so well until the brat appeared, and then his Edo Tenseis started falling like flies. Now they were in an advantage as it was 4 against 3. And the worst part of it, is that he can't afford to kill the brat. Orochimaru decided that enough was enough and spat a sword out of his mouth. It was a Kusanagi sword that is said to be indestructible, then again so is Naruto's fan. Suddenly Naruto stiffened, and brought his head down in shame. The Hokage seemed confused and asked what happened. The Kazukage is dead, Naruto said and Orochimaru eyes widened. The Kazukage was supposed to invade the village with a small army, and take it surprise. What happened? The Hokage asked. He was leading 200 shinobis towards us, so I launched my Kirinjutsu and killed them, all Naruto said in a low voice. He had just killed over 200 people with a single jutsu. Even though he was defending his village, those shinobis were just following orders from their leader and Orochimaru himself. The Hokage's eyes widened as well everyone's else. To be able to kill, so many shinobis with a single jutsu. It reminded him of his father the Yellow Flash who used his flying thunder god jutsu jutsu, to decimate almost 1000 shinobis during the third great war. To place such guilt on such a young man, the Hokage thought. War never brought benefits to anyone, and this little invasion was proof of that. That must be one hell of a jutsu the Raikage commented slightly interest in it. The ability to instantly take out so many shinobis easily ranks the jutsu as S rank. The next tag is ready Jiraiya stated, and they got ready once again. I won't allow this anymore. Mito use anything, use your strongest seal, I don't care just finish the more Chimaru ordered, and Mito obeyed. Mito instantly started going through hand seals at very high speed indicating that it was going to be one big sequence, and big sequences usually aren't good. Yuria was watching carefully the seal sequence when his eyes widened in realization. You can't allow her to finish that seal. Stop her now Yuria yelled, but it was too late. Sealing trap. 
Obliteration Mito said and instantly Kanji erupted from her hand and covered the entire roof where Jiraiya and others were. The Kanji suddenly starting flowing through the air trapping Jiraiya and the other in a sphere. Activate Mito said, and the Kanji sphere glowed before exploding with such a force that the entire building shook, but the explosion in flames didn't leave the sphere and remained there for a few seconds. The flames died down, and Kanji faded dispersing the sphere. Orochimaru smirked when the smoke cleared as he saw nothing inside the sphere. He couldn't even sense them anymore, so that could only mean that he won. In the end Kanoha shall perish as well Orochimaru said laughing, and the Edo Tensei looked down in shame. Don't get cocky boy, the Raikage said, and they all reappeared in the rooftop via Naruto's Kami. Naruto by this time was sitting on the ground taking long breaths. How did you survive? Orochimaru asked getting pissed. No matter what he did they always managed to escape. You have Naruto to thank for, the Hokage said looking at him. He transported us all to his pocket dimension just before the explosion happened, the Hokage said chuckling and Orochimaru scowled. You really are one of the kind Naruto-kun Orochimaru said chuckling. Such a perfect vessel he said. I don't swing that way Naruto said chuckling. I have both tags ready let's end this for good, Jiraiya said before everyone agreed. This battle had gone on long enough, and Naruto was almost completely exhausted. I'll make my final move Naruto said before he disappeared in a flash. He reappeared right behind Taburama and slammed Rasengan in his back, sending him flying towards the Hokage who caught him and immobilized him allowing Jiraiya to seal him. You did well sir, Taburama said before disappearing. Thank you, Sensei the Hokage replied. Your next Naruto whispered into Mido's ear as he flashed behind her as well. The Sengen Naruto set and slammed it against Mido destroying her body completely. Jiraiya quickly approached her and placed a tag on her releasing her as well. Now it's only Orochimaru the Hokage said. Kanoha may have survived today, but it shall fall, Orochimaru said as he getting ready to leave. You're not going anywhere, Naruto said as he flashed next to him and grabbed him by the arm. The moment Naruto caught Orochimaru Kanji started flowing out of Naruto's arm. Orochimaru seeing this immediately performed a kawarimi with a log, but the kanji did manage to cover his entire right arm. This is the end Naruto set before placing his right hand in the tiger seal. Activate Naruto set, and almost instantly the kanji glowed, and what seemed to be worse pain Orochimaru ever felt, this one was even worse. Orochimaru screamed in pain until the seal started to fade off and disappeared from his arm. What did you do brat? Orochimaru asked. His arm felt normal, however it was a bit numb from the pain. I destroyed the chakra network on your arm. You can no longer mold chakra with that arm. You lose Naruto said smirking. This won't be the end. Drop the barrier we are leaving Orochimaru ordered. And immediately the sound four dropped the barrier and ran towards their master. They grabbed him and tried to jump away. You aren't going anywhere Naruto said before he summoned his golden chains and tried to capture them. But one of the sounds four launched what seemed to a spider's web, giving them enough time to shunshin away. Damn it, they got away Naruto said punching the ground. Don't worry Naruto-kun we will get him eventually, the Hokage said. All of them were taking deep breaths as they overlooked Kanoha. It seemed that the village didn't take much damage, and the Hokage was glad for it. Naruto suddenly clutched his head in pain. Old man, the invasion is over, and my clones are dispelling so, I'll be fainting now. See you tomorrow, Naruto said as his eyes rolled behind his head, and he fell to the ground, only to have the Hokage grabbing him. Rest now Naruto. You did much more, than I could ever hope for, the Hokage said as he picked Naruto, and secured him in his back. That's some kid the Raikage said. Yes, he is Jiraiya said proud of the shinobi his godson became. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoyed. If you want a next part of this video, like subscribe and comment down below and turn on that bell notification and also check out the other videos that I have created and enjoy. See you in the next video. Peace.